Nurture the dreams that will inspire you to go beyond your limits. A very good afternoon, everyone. I'm Siri Harshida Chaudhary Vempati from first year MBA B section. On behalf of Christ Heights, it's my honor and privilege in welcoming Mr. Fayaz Mohammed, the state head of Cube Cinema, to our corporate interface session. Mr. Fayaz is an alumni of Christ University of MBA Batch 2002 to 4, got placed in campus selection, Star India Private Limited. With an overall experience of more than 16 years, he is now currently working as state head of Cube Cinema. In his overall experience after joining Star India, he moved on to Radio 1, where he worked for 12 years and had rose to the level of station head, Bangalore. He has a vast experience in the areas of media management, brand management, and advertising. Today, he is hero to discuss on the topic, MBA moving beyond academics, where the aim of this session is to take us through journey that will help us think how to make the most of our MBA. We, the MBA students of Christ University, sir, looking forward to this exciting session. Over to you, sir. Oh, uh, Siri, thanks so much. I think there was a very warm welcome. And I think, you know, uh, that's another thing which I think, you know, uh, when you're doing your MBA, we all get to learn that after you complete your MBA and come back to college, you get a lot of respect. While you're in the class, the teachers might scold you and, you know, uh, probably you might get to, you know, hear a lot of stuff. But believe me, it's because what you hear around this two years is what makes you sit proudly and address all the students here. So I'm really very grateful for the opportunity. And uh, Dr. Kavita did mention to me, ma'am, uh, that you know there are some 800 students, associate deans, HODs, HOS, and faculties. Everybody who's you know attending this. So quite frankly, it's you know my privilege to attend uh, this uh, you know uh, you know this this audience for that matter because uh, very honestly I feel I am facing more knowledge than you are facing uh, the kind of knowledge which you are talking about. Uh, See, what happens is in this two years, what's going to happen is you're going to attend a lot of, you know, classes, lectures, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be immense amount of knowledge which you'll, you know, get accustomed to. And, you know, we, we also say that, you know, there's a lot of gyan which, you know, you're going to listen to. And if you feel for the next one, one and a half hours, you're also going to listen to some gyan, you're totally right. Stay there. Some gyan I will also give for that matter. Now, what has happened in the, uh, you know, in the domain, see, for example, in a normal scenario, I would have actually like to come to the college, you know, in the glorious conference room of Christ College is, is where I would have liked to present this. But today, due to the pandemic, we are doing everything digitally. So this world has actually changed a lot in the one and a half years. And, you know, while it might sound a little dramatic when I tell you that 17 years back, I did my MBA from Christ College. But the truth is, the, if you, you can imagine if the world has changed so much in the one and a half years for that matter, it is really changed in the last 17 years for that matter. Because I am talking to you about a time when in a class of one or two hours, there used to be, for example, two hours would be sometimes spent in teachers you know, uh, dictating notes to students. There used to be uh, something called as an equipment which looked like this radio which you are seeing on your screen now. It, will be, it, will, it used to be like a big OHP projector. And there used to be a transparent sheet on which uh, a teacher would have had to write everything on a sketch pen, which you typically write, uh, for example, a page. Normally, you take two minutes or three minutes to write. <clears throat> on an OHP slide, it used to take about 15 to 20 minutes for a teacher to write something on it. So we are talking about from that time to now in, 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 a, in a Montessori today, children are you know, exposed to digital blackboards. And the beauty is they are not even black. They are digital boards. So the world has changed a lot and um, in, a, in, a, in a better way. You know, for example, I would have, for example, love to be where you are today. Uh, you know, there was a joke a couple of days back in our alumni group that the entire alumni batch of Christ College, you know, for that matter, they want to come back and study if the management actually has a better package for all the for, for all the alumni, because we all love Christ College and we, will love, we would love to come back. <clears throat> so what I'm going to discuss today is something which is moving beyond academics, not necessarily stuff which you would listen to the classrooms because uh, I'm not here to tell you four piece of marketing because definitely you know it, uh, you have better access to resources to get the knowledge for the same. So what we are going to do is to just 
bear with me. I am going to take you through a small roller coaster, roller coaster ride of moving beyond academics. And the part which you need to know is today, Zoom is your classroom. As we sit here, you imagine 800 students would never be packed in a single classroom. But here we all, we all are here together. So Zoom is your classroom. LinkedIn is your conference room. Facebook is your kiosk. Wikipedia is your library. Instagram is your canteen. Twitter is your bird's mark. This is my favorite, actually. So we are moving beyond academics already. We are beyond academics. We are beyond classrooms. So this world is definitely going, you know, is, is very small for you. Uh, you have better access than any badge of any age for that matter. So congratulations. You are definitely in safe hands if you are with Christ College. Um, with your permission, I'm going to move on, uh, you know, at any given point of time, I would actually prefer, uh, you know, this to be interactive, but, you know, considering there are technological challenges, uh, but having said that, Siri, if you could coordinate on students behalf or anybody for that matter, I can be stopped anywhere to, you know, complete a point. So Siri, if you would like to ask me a question or any of the students, uh, I'm, I would be more than happy to take it even between the presentation. Okay. Sure, sir. Yeah. So the ABCs, okay. Uh, well, I have a small um, outlook about B school. See, uh, a couple of days back, I was uh, having an interaction with one of our, uh, you know, student coordinators, uh, and we made a point that uh, somewhere in the marketing term for uh, B schools back in the day, the term school was actually wrong because you know after graduation, if you have to go back to school, then uh, you're, you know, somewhere you're making a mistake because uh, a B school is actually not a school; it's actually a workshop. Uh, I just mentioned that, you know, about four piece of marketing. Now, when you are in a B school, you are actually not supposed to be taught what four piece of marketing are. Like, you know, you, when you are in the class, you already know the four piece of marketing. And if you were the marketing manager of a particular brand, what, how would you change your four pieces? Ideally, what needs to be discussed with in, in a classroom? So B schools are not actually B schools. They're actually workshops, uh, but considering it's still school of business and management. We will stick to our ABCs. So what I'm going to cover today and Dr. Kavita, I know specifically, uh, I would like to mention here. I would have wanted A to Z having a complete one day workshop at Christ College, Kengeri or main, main campus. But today we'll have to do with the ABCs. Uh, we are going sure. to cover from A to E today. So what I'm going to cover today is A for uh, what we are saying is uh, always be Hatke. Uh, for B, we are talking about be accessful to be successful. Content creation is wealth creation. Disruption is going to be the most powerful word, word in business today. And uh, I think this is one word which you will probably have to get used to. This word is going to be something which you will hear on a daily basis in the corporate world. And uh, entrepreneurship is actually the real goal of MBA. So these are the five. Uh, areas which I'm going to cover, and these are the ABCs for today. Um, I'm going to move forward with each of them, and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy the journey. So it pays to be different. Uh, what does always be Hatke mean? Even the Hatke word is, is the key word here, because you, we could have written always be different. Uh, I would like to narrate a small uh, ex, you know, experience or incident, you know, as far as my journey with Radio 1 is concerned. My uh, campus recruitment was with Radio City, but the place where actually I learned the ropes and you know broke my teeth and uh, you know ensured that I got new ones and at the end of the day, which actually turned me into a thorough professional a place where uh, you know I definitely have a lot of gratitude towards is Radio One. I spent 12 years here, and one of the best things which I learned here is as soon as we entered Radio One, we were competing with. Uh, the radio mirches of the world, radio cities of the world, every big brand which had deep pockets, uh, we were competing with them. And as soon as we, uh, you know, it was a third phase of radio, all the radio stations started playing Bollywood music, specifically in Bangalore. At that time, we decided that we will launch the world's first Kannada radio station. So Radio 1 actually began as a Kannada radio station in Bangalore. So over one or two years, Everybody saw that the numbers were really picking up for Radio One. So one by one, most radio stations started turning ball, you know, turning Kannada, because that's where we. Because at the end of the day, from a demographic point of view, there are more Kannada listeners, you know, in in Bangalore than any other you know language for that matter. But what happens is when all the radio stations start playing that music, your market starts shrinking. 
At that time, we turned our radio station from a Kannada radio station to a Bollywood radio station. And for undisputed five years, we were the only Bollywood radio station in Bangalore. We, we thoroughly enjoyed a certain monopoly. Uh, at that time, I went and up to my MD and asked him a simple question that, you know, what is our strategy? So differentiation was our strategy. He said, if everybody is going to play cricket, we are going to play tennis. We will change the game and we definitely did. So again, like for five to seven years, we had a complete domination of the market as far as, you know, Bollywood was concerned. But uh, in, in business, you cannot be a monopoly for a very long time. Sooner, all the radio stations started turning towards Bollywood also. So at one point of time, we had a strategy of creating a unique international network across the country. And uh, we created India's first international radio format and radio brand for that matter. And over a period of time, we won the Kotler's Philip Kotler Award for being the most innovative and differentiated radio station. So my point being that, you know, if, if you if you can't be the first, be different. The world values different players. I'm just going to play a small video. Let's hope that uh, I think I'm unable to play it here. Joe, sir, I'm going to send this video. Probably you can send it to students. There's no option of playing this here. Is it okay if I play it on, from my phone? We can be hutke here, right? But will students be able to see? Yeah. If they can see this. Uh, it's too tiny. Okay. Yeah. So we'll move on. I think uh, there's a technical challenge here not to be able to play this here. The second uh, very important point is uh, be access to be be accessful to be successful. Now the point is uh, you know I will I will narrate again a small story. If I were to talk to you, uh, everybody talks about Shah Rukh Khan being an outsider and completely coming and dominating the Bollywood uh, you know market in in in, a, in our country, and uh, not you know he he wasn't from any uh, family background of any family you know uh, of any stars or you know not uh, any lineage of actors or anything for that matter. But what if I told you that there's a very interesting story as far as Shah Rukh Khan is concerned? Uh, Shah Rukh Khan's father was actually one of the uh, he, he had done he was actually a failed businessman according to Shah Rukh Khan and he did a lot of business where he didn't see success in. So one of the business where he uh, couldn't make a lot of money was uh, being a caterer at National School of Drama. So what happened is you imagine that you know when uh, Shah Rukh's father was a caterer in National School of Drama, the children. As a child, he got access to watching a lot of plays free of cost, because if you are a child and your dad is definitely, you know, has access to a play, uh, you get to see a lot of brilliant actors uh, acting in a play. And from that point, you develop a desire to become an actor yourself. So Shah Rukh got, got access to that and somewhere that desire developed in him to become an actor. What happens in life is, you know, being Having the right access is very important. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, there, there's a very uh, important theory of six degrees of separation, which I have put here, is about making meaningful connections. Today, the network is our net worth. And this, again, this is one line which you will continue to hear. Uh, what I mean to say is, for example, the kind of access which you have is going to lead to your success. What if I told you that uh, Steve Jobs uh, had his neighbors in Hewlett and Packard. So somewhere, you know, having those kind of neighbors makes a huge difference. For example, if there is a talented boy, you know, in, living closer to my house, and he's he has the potential of being an RJ, for him to become an RJ because I am his neighbor, you know, has a huge chance. Now, you might turn around and ask me that, okay, you know, uh, who we have as our neighbor is not something which we have any, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, control over. But the first thing which we need to do is to discover the fact that you know first of all what we have access to 
the beauty you have today is, for example, you have an access to all the network with all the alumni, a lot of, you know, for example, you know, you know people who passed out of Christ College and today LinkedIn, or for that matter, in the in the beginning of, of our presentation, we discussed that the amount of uh, connections you, you, you can make today sitting you know at home digitally is far more higher. I was wanting so, to so yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Uh, if you're presenting any present we couldn't view the slides. We could only view the on the starting slide. Okay, so this is my fourth or fifth slide which I have presented. Uh, Siri, is it um, any way where I can send you this presentation and uh, you know somebody could uh, send it? Uh, somebody, somebody could play it. I think uh, I can also try, Joe, sir. Yeah. Uh, when we can see the first slide, I think we can see the other slides. Yes, the ABCs we now can we see. Can. Yeah, after, after the ABCs, you can see this one. Always be yes. Hatke, this one. Yes, 94.3 yes, we can see. Yeah. After this, can you see this one? Be yes, accessible. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we are fine, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Any confusion, Siri, on this? No, sir. It is clear. Now. All right. So six degrees of separation. What happens is uh, today the world is so small that uh, you know for for any person to connect to between two planets, you actually need a maximum of six people. So for example, you know if I have to connect with, for example, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, I happen to work with a radio station which is Radio One. Similarly, we have a competing we had a competing radio station called Radio Indigo. Now this radio station, uh, you know, uh, is uh, the CEO is Mr. Sanjay Prabhu, whom I have a connection with. This station is owned by Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, who owns Radio Indigo, as well as uh, Asianet TV channel. And Rajiv Chandrasekhar is actually within the cabinet. He is one of the Council of Ministers of Mr. Narendra Modi. So now what happens is between me, there is Mr. Sanjay Prabhu, there is Dr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, and Narendra Modi. So we are, you know, we are like four people. Between four people, you can actually make a connection between a you know, common man and a prime minister, for that matter. Uh, similarly, for example, there's this lady whose whose name is uh, Lakshmi Prathuri. She is the lady which actually got Ted into India. She is the um, you know event head and you know the 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 uh, a very serial entrepreneur. She owns a company called Ink Talks. She directly, you know, has access to uh, the, you know, the, you know, the president of US for that matter. So between me and say the president of US, there are like two or three, you know, variables for that matter. What I'm trying to tell you is, it's not about, you know, uh, telling you that you know you can get access to a prime minister or you can get an access to a president. No matter whom you want to connect in this world, there are only six maximum people who are going to be a part of that. So the beauty is. If you have an idea and if you have, if you want to get in touch with somebody for that matter, you just have to, you know, cross various levels. I'll give you my own personal example. I love to read and uh, Jeffrey Archer is, you know, one of my heroes. All my life I've read his books and uh, there's a lot of, you know, you know uh, what do you call nostalgia when it comes to, you know, his books for that matter. Imagine working at a place like Radio One and there was a time when Jeffrey Archer had come to Bangalore to um, you know, promote his book. And because we were radio partners, I not only got an opportunity to meet him, all the RDS are usually interested in interviewing Bollywood or, you know, the celebrities who are into entertainment. So what happens is because you cannot ask the right kind of questions to a celebrity uh, like Jeffrey Archer, they actually requested me to interview Jeffrey Archer. So imagine what happens is you are just you know, a normal person and you in life, you get an opportunity to interview your hero. Can you see this line? So there I am with uh, Mr. Jeffrey yes. Archer. This was 10 years back and of course, uh, 15 kilos back. So a humble salesperson meets the champion of bestsellers. That's Jeffrey Archer. So now the, my, my point is in life, you will get you know an opportunity in terms of the kind of access which you develop and the kind of access which you create for yourself is going to help you like for example today within our alumni if you want to make it something big in for example from a cyber security point of view you got a guy like shinto who's definitely the best person to speak about cyber security if you want to get access to hr 
Shilpa, you know, is one of one of our alumni members, and she is fabulous when it comes to HR, and she is working with Infosys. You got the access. How best you can make use of this access is going to be completely dependent on you. So, you know, as MBAs, it's not just about you know what you learn in the classroom. This is something which, you, which is beyond classroom. You'll get an opportunity to get access to, and together, you know, for example. Whatever which you know as a team you are going to work together as a project or as an idea, it will even get it will get even bigger when you get access to it. Can I move on? Yes. Yeah. So uh, the C is about content creation is wealth creation. Before I proceed, I'll just give you all a small exercise. Uh, if you all have a pen and a paper on you. I would request everybody to write a favorite quote of yours on the paper which is lying next to you. I'm assuming it is going to take two minutes. So, whichever quote which you like, which is on like on top of your mind, please write it. All right. So after you finish writing this quote, now imagine from a Christ College point of view, there are 750 quotes which are written. If all the students were, you know, uh, for example, to be put on a platform or for example, on a WhatsApp group or anything for that matter, and if you all were to submit your favorite quote, it can actually become a book of, you know, 750 to 800 quotes, right? This is what all major content companies are doing today. Like, for example, Instagram doesn't have its own content. Facebook doesn't have its own content. Twitter doesn't have its own content. It's the biggest publishing company in the world. This is how content is being created. It is called UGC, which is user generated content. And the beauty of that is that the more user generated content it is, what you will do is, for example, because you put your quote uh, and it is your college, each of you are going to put in your respective, for example, uh, Instagram feed or a LinkedIn feed and things like that. And each one of you must be having an average of 500 FB friends, nothing less than you know, 100 to 200 um, you know, followers on Instagram. On LinkedIn, you would be having so many people. So it will have a snowball effect on any you know, property which you create. So today, uh, if you are good at something, you just start somewhere and start creating content. While, while I'm whatever I'm talking, you know, may sound a lot of marketing for that matter, even from a finance point of view. For example, you know, uh, there's a friend of mine who, who, who's a CA. What she's done is she's trying to make uh, finance very easy for people. So she's created a YouTube channel and uh, talking about fundamentals of finance and CA terms. And she's created a you know, YouTube channel for that matter. So irrespective of whichever category you are today, there is so much of value in creating content. The, if you look at this boy, right? He's a nine year old boy. He's the, one of the highest earning YouTuber of 2010. All he does is reviewing toys. I mean, imagine a kid being paid for that and not in few dollars. He's earning close to $30 million for what? For just reviewing toys, right? And you might feel that, okay, this is like one random example or, you know, very rarely, you know, things happen like this. You're living in a country. It's so beautiful, you know, from a point of view, it's like a marketer's dream. You, you, you know, I mean, you know, today, uh, I, I never imagined in my childhood that the population of our country is going to be our biggest strength because there is so much in terms of numbers that every company in the world is wanting to come to India. So coming to the same example of content creation is wealth creation. I'm going to move to my next slide. Look at this one. Can you see this? Okay, this is a guy who's just singing a song in Hindi. And you know, the song probably might not even make any sense, right? He's a, he's a boy called Sahade from, from a place called Sukma. Before this guy went viral, nobody even knew, I mean, that a place like Sukma even you know, uh, was, was, was there in our country. If this reminded me of uh, radio days because all India radio promoted a place called Jumri Talaya, which nobody in the world knew about. But because there was a song request which was coming in all India and a lot of song requests from coming from all our 4G bhais from you know, places where they were, a place like that got marketed. So this guy, uh, Sahadev, just uh, came up with a song 
and it is become viral this guy, guy gets an opportunity of uh, meeting bacha bacha has created a song with this guy the mla of chatisgarh has gone personally to meet this guy overall this you know it's a day where you know this this guy has become a celebrity overnight and in in the digital world you see this happening on a daily basis a guy makes a video of ye hum hai aur yahan party ho rahi hai and it suddenly becomes viral so imagine christ college students singing march on christites march on as an anthem and that becoming viral for that matter because that's what some of the you know uh, medical students of kerala did and that also became viral for that matter so content creation is something uh, which is going to drive a lot of future marketing for that matter and that's where you know we see a lot of wealth creation opportunities and there is a lot to learn from you know from that matter so sitting in your classrooms probably i i could imagine that next set of content coming and getting viral from that place right moving on to the d which is disruption disruption is going to be a common word it's you know in, in my opinion it's a word which i learned a couple of you know months back or years back but it has become a you know innate part every day every uh, you know big company talks about it one what what do we mean by disruption the the best example is this interaction which we are having right now uh, the the digital the online classes have actually disrupted our world i think you know probably we do not need any fancy infrastructure to conduct any high level classroom all you all we need is a decent wifi connection for that matter uh, so disruption in every field right from the way we watch the watch content i am from a cinema industry right now and people think that the ott which is netflix and prime might actually kill theaters completely but the truth is netflix is one of our biggest clients because we as a company do a lot of uh, you know b2b uh, you know uh, what do you call it distribution ship as well we have got our studios all over we have a product called uh, qwire technologies basically we have we own satellites so for 140 countries we actually beam movies uh, in 140 countries we actually began it with a movie called bharat which was a salman khan star and that is how you know distribution is being done today earlier you could see that there was this huge roles technically they would be put in a projection room and uh, in, in theaters the movie uh, was projected and that's where you you know, got content but today the content is available uh, through a few signals for that matter and uh, i have put two important dimensions in this slide you can look at the most innovative innovative companies of the world and it begins with for example right from an apple to you can see mcdonalds here and when you see this the first question you would ask because you know we are all indians and we love our you know our country to be featured here you don't you do not see at this point of time any any of our you know indian companies in the top 50 yet but just next to that you are looking at the you know india being home to 52 you know unicorns and this is only between 2014 to 2021 in just 7 years and you look at the year in which the pandemic has actually hit the world in 2020 and 2021 we've had the maximum number of unicorns being featured um, as you know from our country and and it's you know very soon you're definitely going to see uh, some of indian companies featured in the most innovative companies okay the, one of the consolation here definitely is some of the companies which you see right from a google to you know some of the you know, best tech companies already have indians as their ceos so what my point is that you will see the biggest innovation which is going to happen is going to happen because of india and through you know our country so it's our turn to disrupt so there are two messages which i have here one is disruption is definitely going to happen either we want to be a part of it or we want to be a bystander watching it that's one second is the slide which i'm going to show you it's something which is very 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 personal and this is a journey which all of us should undertake uh, dr kavita can you see this slide yeah so the message which i want to pass on to the students is disrupt your lives right you need to get comfortable with uncomfortable there's a very beautiful line which you can you know a quote which you can read here that people with interesting lives have no vanity they swap cities invest in projects with no guarantee are interested in people who are opposite of them resign without having another job inside believe me all my life i have been told that please do not quit without having a job in hand 
it's not the same world anymore. Accept an invitation to do what they never did. Are prepared to change their favorite color, their favorite dish. Please don't be stuck in your silos. You can change, you can break. Uh, MBA is actually that opportunity for you to change everything which you want to do about yourself in, the, in, in these two years. They start from zero countless times. What more can you ask? This is the time when you want to start from wherever you want to start, right? Do not be frightened of getting old. I mean, you know, in radio, we learned this very important principle that you should look young and sound mature. So, uh, and, and, uh, and, and in a couple of days back, I had the opportunity of addressing some students. And one thing which I said is a uh, lot of blessings to Christ College and the people who are managing it. They gave us so much of stress that we learned how to you know, manage stress for that matter. And today the job stress is nothing because you know it's actually a holy uh, place where you learn uh, the ropes of being a part of the corporate world. So what happens is if you're going through that grind, if you're going through the drill, uh, you, you definitely know how to handle your pressure and not just in your uh, professional life, even in your personal life for that matter. So. Uh, if you are getting uncomfortable at Christ, believe me, it's a very good sign because uh, learning, they say, is a very painful process. When you are when you start to learn anything, for example, you are you you uh, you know riding a two wheeler all your life, and you suddenly start riding a four wheeler, you are always scared that you are going to hit somebody. So, so unless you are in a in a state of being that you know having that un, you know uncomfortability, you are not going to learn. And there will come a day that you know somebody. Uh, who wakes you up in the middle of the night and you are actually sleepy, but you can actually manage to drive your car. And that is a state of being uh, unconsciously competent. So that is what a course, an MBA, which will do to you. You will become so good at handling stress, handling different kinds of situations that when you are actually working in the corporate world, this will come to you as naturally as you know driving a, driving a car when you are used to it. So they're, they're not frightened of getting old. You can climb on stage, share your hair, do craziness for love, purchase one-way tickets. So the fact is, do what you've not done you know, ever in your life. Like, for example, one of the things which, you know, uh, you know a personal example was, um, I had actually, got, when, when the campus recruitment happened, uh, I had got an opportunity to be uh, taking Whirlpool Hyderabad, and, uh, you know, I got Radio City Bangalore. So I actually took, Took it took Radio City at that up because you know Radio City was a very cool brand and the more important factor is I you know I didn't want to leave Bangalore at that point of time. Uh, while I'm very happy and very contented and in, for the last 17 years, if there is one thing which I have not done and I feel like doing is you know probably changing my cities. So you know probably now my job allows me to you know travel a bit, but nothing like you know leaving your city and if you are already students who left your cities to come to Christ's college and study for that matter. I really am, I envy you, I'm jealous of you because quite frankly, it will take you, uh, you know, quite ahead in life if you already are willing to change, you know, because if you're not very particular about your job location and things like that, you'll definitely go far ahead in life for that matter. Having said that, you also have an opportunity of working from home anywhere you can, you can sit and work. So, you know, sharpening your skills is going to be the, the biggest parameter. So if I have, um, your permission, I'll move to the last and final slide, which is uh, something again close to me. Can you see this? It's coming it's, up. Yeah, okay. What are you seeing on your screen, uh, Dr. Kavita? Uh, it, is, it says you're sharing your content. Okay, okay. You may have to wait. Okay. Meanwhile, any questions, uh, Siri? Is there any question which you want to ask at this point of time? Uh, I'm clear for now, sir. Okay. It's very clear to have this. We can see your screen. Thanks for using Cisco WebEx. <laughs> Ah, now the desktop, we are able to see the screen. Okay, yeah. one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open this one. So yes, yes. I'm just wondering if you know that uh, video could be played. Yeah, it can be. You just click on the link. It, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Now, now, now it can be. Yeah, I think so. are yes. To, are you able to see it? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 
Kotler Award. The sound maybe has to be increased a bit. Oh, it's just music. All right. Uh, can you see this slide on entrepreneurship? Yes. Yeah, all right. So uh, this is my uh, final slide um, on entrepreneurship, basically. So uh, we've, we've had a lot of discussion about this, that once you complete your engineering course, you become an engineer. After you do your MBBS, you become a doctor. Today, what is happening is everybody who has, uh, in fact, you know, for example, if somebody gets 100 likes on their FB, they call themselves as digital expert now. Right. If you have thousand followers on your Instagram, you start saying that, okay, look, I can manage your brand. Anybody who's doing a Google online course is saying that, okay, hey, look, I know SEM better than anybody. So after MBA, why aren't we becoming, you know, businessmen or businesswomen? So that's a big question. And our country needs a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, before anybody asks me this question, what about me? I'm actually working on one or two parallel projects and also helping a couple of entrepreneurs. And, uh, I also have the, uh, you know, probably I've, I've been a bit lucky that, you know, I come from a business family of uh, Gujaratis. So there is business which is discussed more at dinner table than in a, at any conference room. So uh, that's the beauty of it. But if uh, I would like to give one message to all the students and anybody who's hearing this, that entrepreneurship is actually easier when your baggages are less in life. Everybody in all, uh, you know, all of us in our life, we all uh, wear a bag. BAG bag. Now this bag is not the bag, the laptop bag or, you know, for example, LV bag, which anybody owns. This bag is B for belief, A for attitude and G for goal. If you believe in yourself, if you have the attitude, you can definitely achieve your goal. So please carry a bag in life, but don't carry a baggage. So the point which I'm wanting to say is the sooner you become an entrepreneur, it will be easier for you. As years pass, it's going to be a little tougher because, you know, you will be having those baggages in terms of probably a lot of responsibilities at this point of time, probably nobody expects you to bring salary home and stuff like that. So a great opportunity for you to become an entrepreneur. And I want to give you a personal example. Uh, when I was working with Radio One, we uh, startups suddenly flourished as a very big category. Uh, of advertising and, uh, you know, this was the year when Flipkart was launched and all the leading brands started getting launched. So there was this guy who uh, gave me a business of about uh, 10 to 12 lakhs as you know advertising uh, revenue for radio. Uh, and what happened is he, he came and met me after a couple of months, or, you know, four to five months to be precise. So he came and he requested one thing to me. He said, Faiz, the last time when I had actually met you, uh, I was the co-founder of that company. This time I have started this company. I'm actually the founder of that company. So please uh, reduce your rates a bit. I complied because uh, we love entrepreneurs and we gave them a decent discount. And this guy had actually in, in a span of two years created four brands and, you know, exited some good you know companies for that matter. He was just 28 year old. So uh, age is not a factor in, from an entrepreneurship point of view. Uh, it actually helps if you start your entrepreneurship journey a bit early. And uh, one thing I should definitely commend that, uh, you, you, you know, our, our batch is very lucky that we have a guy called Gaurav. He's a star when it comes to entrepreneurship from the alumni group. In fact, you know, probably going forward, uh, he's also starting a lot of initiatives with, you know, the Christ College alumni. Uh, there, I, I don't see the day of, you know, it's very far from, you know, we have our own incubations, you know, uh, as far as Christ College is concerned. And some of our best ideas will be kicked off from Christ College for that matter. So take entrepreneurship very seriously. And I'm sure it is going to become one of the biggest contributors for that matter, right? So these are the, just to summarize, I am talking about the ABCs here. Uh, Dr. Kavita, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, so always be hutke, be accessful to be successful. Content creation is wealth creation. Disruption is going to be the most powerful word in business today. And last but not the least is entrepreneurship is the real goal of MBA. And considering you've been a brilliant audience, okay, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to give you an F, which is not here. So the F 
is एफ एम बोले तो फैज मोहम्मद just to uh, it's a personal point what all of us we need to work on personal branding uh, like i said that you know if you have if you are passionate about something try to become an influencer within that category for example if you if you like fitness be, try to become a fitness onto you know uh, influencer if you are a guy who's loves food who doesn't like food become a food blogger for that matter content creation is wealth creation and create a personal branding for yourself so that's my message uh thank you very much i think it's great to address you all i'm going to be taking the questions thank you sir uh, we had a very insightful session from you uh, few questions are uh, regarding q and a session from right. jagannath uh, vital he is asking netflix is doing cash burn doesn't it is uh, it is at high risk and its ott fails then the company will go on huge loss right uh all right so uh, i will take the question see what happens in business now earlier uh, the businesses were very uh, different in the sense that uh, you know for example i come from a you know like i said a gujarati businessman background so if you ask my father he will say that you buy a product at 10 rupees and you sell it at 12 rupees you make a 2 rupee profit only that is business everything else is you know a sham right if, if you do not make profits then how you know for example what is the point in even getting business but the world of business has changed in fact that's what we are talking about that you know moving beyond academics moving beyond business netflix and a lot of other companies for that matter is they are a lot into data like for example uh, zomato okay if you know uh, they weren't any making any money uh, in fact they are doing a loss they came up with their biggest ipos a couple of days back that for example if you order food and you are you know for example you know not even giving any delivery charges zomato makes loss for every uh what do you call you know every order for that matter right but imagine if i have to start a new restaurant i go to zomato zomato has immense data for example i want to open a restaurant in raja rajeshwari nagar so i go to zomato and ask them hey, look if i want to open a restaurant in raja raja rajeshwari nagar what is the cuisine which i should have because you know probably raja rajeshwari nagar has a very south indian crowd so but probably zomato would throw statistics at me they would so they would show that for example there are some 12 to 15000 orders coming from a particular pin code okay there are some 15000 aloo parathas which are sold every day so instead of opening you know for example a south indian cuisine restaurant i might actually open a aloo paratha you know kind of a north indian restaurant for that matter data is where lot of companies are making a lot of money and that is what i you know probably we think they are playing cricket they are actually playing tennis like for example amazon they have the biggest uh, you know what do you call warehouses in the world they are actually for example everybody knows that mcdonalds is actually not selling burgers they are in they are in real estate business they are they have a franchise business so from a netflix point of view they might be doing a cash burn today but today i think you know for example they are the world's largest entertainment company so there there is going to be a point where they will make you know more money than all the studios put together i hope uh, i answered his question yes sir uh, that's very very, yeah. very clear to have that uh, the next question is uh, sandeep sharma is asking insights on social media marketing Uh, anything specific social media marketing is like an ocean for example i have done you know for example i work with a startup very closely into influencer marketing now there is influencer marketing there is there is a lot of other forms of marketing within social media also the facebook marketing is very different the affiliate marketing is very different uh, so social media is a very broad term any anything specific which would help okay yeah There's another question from Sri Charan asking: Is personal branding possible without having a social media account? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, see, what happens is, you know, you can create your brand the way, you know, for example, you see, uh, there, there are a lot of offline opportunities where you can create your brand. For example, if you are a guy who goes to a mall every Sunday and probably you are doing stand-up comedy. without even having a social media channel there will be an audience then you would know that every sunday you come there and you know you are doing stand up comedy so you know a personal brand will be created through 
uh, you know, interpersonal, uh, you know, offline uh, medium also. Like, for example, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, for, for, for you to create a personal branding, consistency is, in the, is the name of the game, right? So, for example, you know, if, if I use a term like FM Boleto Faz Mohammed, I use it at, like, for example, wherever I make a presentation, probably on my WhatsApp, you know, uh, profile also. So, there are uh, what's very important, like, look at Amul. Uh, wherever there there is an online, for example, there is an opportunity where they take a current event, you know, for example, the current affair, and they create an ad about it. So Amul has created a personal brand with that, you know, for example, you know, with that. So personal branding is definitely possible without social media, but why not make use of social media? Because social media is very powerful today. Like, you know, literally it is like throwing gasoline in on a small, small spark. So if you have the opportunity of using uh, social media, please go ahead and use it. Uh, you know, personal branding works brilliantly in social media compared to any other uh, you know form of media for that matter. Uh, and the same set of question: uh, Can non-paid social marketing be successful? Sorry, can non-paid social marketing? In fact, uh, I see non-paid social marketing being far more successful than paid marketing also. A lot of brands, for that matter, are creating a lot of virality, uh, and we are seeing it today. That you know, for example, irrespective of you know, for example, that's the reason you know they, are, they are, for example, there are a lot of nano influencers which are used who actually are not paid, but you know, for example, they're given product samples. So what happens is they use the sample, they put it on uh, their Instagram handles, and suddenly they become very popular. So uh, brands sometimes brands are very uh, smart. What they do is uh, they they create certain for example when you, you would remember uh, that you know when oneplus had launched oneplus was not doing any major marketing in fact they created uh, you know uh, they, they created something called as uh, artificial demand uh, like for example only if you have an invite for a one oneplus phone only then you can buy it so you won't believe there are people who actually paid uh, money for a oneplus invite the oneplus invite used to be sold for 3000 to 5000 rupees so brands, if they if they are smart, can actually do any any kind of good non-paid marketing also, and we see a lot of brands doing that for that matter. Yes. Sir. Well, there's a question from De Diana Thomas. How do I get parallel projects with other entrepreneurs to work in growing startup? The, the, the beauty is you need to you know get in touch you need to bring something to the table it is more about having a lot of interaction see uh, one thing we need to be very clear about is what value we can add like for example uh, see what happened is uh, I, I i know uh, like the, there was this boy who used to have his weekends free so what happened is he started approaching you know one or two showrooms for for them what happens is look at the beauty retail actually ha works better during weekends on saturday and sundays usually there are there is a more footfall and saturday and sundays is usually when students are relatively free so i i know a person what happened is he will, you know was willing to work with these entrepreneurs who are having this uh, showrooms uh, they just started and they were they weren't willing to pay very high salary so he used to volunteer working on weekends what happened is this guy uh, was very good at his work and things like that. So over a period of time, when that brand grew, when those entrepreneurs grew, they gave the opportunity of this guy to you know, become their marketing head. So uh, don't be surprised that, you know, for example, what entrepreneurs and today's new age businessmen see is the kind of drive a person has. Like kind of, for example, what you bring to the table, they they, they, they really are not very, you know, uh, for example, the percentage which, percentages which you score or the number of degrees you have, all that is important. Nobody saying no. But what really matters is, you know, for example, are you a solution to my problem? That is the question which everybody is asking today. That, for example, you know, the person is not hiring you because they want an MBA from Christ College. They want a marketing problem to be solved. And that is the reason they hire you, right? So as long as you do that, it is definitely going to work. So to answer our question, uh, you know, if you approach entrepreneurs, uh, even without, you know, for example, you can ask them to take your services at a volunteer. For example, there is something called as, uh, you know, you you all heard of internships. Now there is something which is even more wonderful. It's called the gig economy, GIG, gig economy, in which 
what is happening is uh, people do gigs and they earn money and, they, and you don't need to have a full time job the best example is a uh, lot of our rjs who of radio station they used to do gigs on weekends where for example they would do mcing events for that matter they actually were you earning more money what the radio stations were paying them that's the reason for example uh, rj prithvi uh, rakesh who is the professor ulfat sultan they are actually very big names in uh, you you all heard of a guy called danish seth right danish seth rose to the level of he was just for example uh, there is lot of humor you know yeah. and he brings smiles laughter in everyone's face and uh, he's known for that uh, what is that calling called as prank calls uh -huh, prank calls yeah and he's acted in a movie also yeah yeah nagraj nagraj yes. so nagraj so, nagraj <laughs> oh yes. so my point is that he was just a part time rj he was not even a full time rj then what happened is when you have the talent then he was given a full time show he became a comedian then he became an actor for that matter once you have the talent and you use your access be accessible to be successful be accessible to get successful so once you get the access do not leave that opportunity yes sir there's a question the question what should be the first step to start a business in tech space if you have an idea see if you have an idea okay uh, see an idea specifically has to pass through a couple of filters uh, you know there is a feasibility filter which you need to pass there is a practicality you know filter there are financial filters so there are a couple of filters which need to pass but if you have an idea and you feel see there are only two questions which you need to ask when you are uh, you know starting any business any business be it tech business or a non tech business one will what whatever i am coming with will it solve somebody's problem right like for example uber is solving somebody's problem right that you know i don't have a car then you know uber will solve my problem of mobility right one first question which you need to ask is can i solve somebody's problem the second question which you need to ask is will i make money by solving somebody's problem if i am just solving a problem and i am not making any money out of it then probably there will be challenges in terms of scalability of that business so if you have an idea and you do not uh, have the tech for it you actually ideally need to find a co-founder who is within the tech space so believe me today there are meetups which are happening today you can actually approach incubators uh, see once you have an idea no the idea will not allow you to sleep so what you need to ideally do is start writing a business plan for it and then start meeting people and you will meet a lot of people before anybody uh, takes you seriously yes so if you start early that is always an advantage yes sir yeah uh and the question from sheetal rani for today's generation which industry would you recommend if someone wants to pursue sales and grow in the field uh see uh you know there is what what we should not look at is you know for example which industry is growing or anything for that matter what what's more important is what are you passionate about so imagine I'll, i'll tell you one thing now uh, one of the like i give you my own personal example right uh, now whirlpool was a very good company to work with it was amazing but probably i have always been you know for example fascinated towards brands and i'm more of a for media guy that's the reason i joined radio city now if you look at if you make the comparison fmcgs is much much bigger an industry compared to uh, you know for example radio or for that matter even media right now is it good to work in an industry where you know the industry is growing superbly okay uh, or you know, for example an industry which might be decent those are all personal choices which we make so ideally what should be important is that you know we, we need to know that which industry are we going to be good at and trying trying to position ourselves there ideally that would be the best strategy according to me but i mean said that um, if you were to look at uh, you know uh, industry where sales and everything is we need to look at you know for example sometimes our own consumption see for example today you know for a fact digital is growing so anything which you do in a digital tech space for example if you if you are in a city like bangalore you are living in a startup capital of the country i mean you know there, there are immense opportunities right if you are into a tech space but when you go and enter a tech space what if you don't like it so 
it's better to you know find an industry where you feel that you have you have your heart in i might sound very cliche but i think what steve jobs says has a lot of merit if you love what you are doing okay uh, you will feel like you know for example you not worked a day in your life uh, i mean you know i enjoy interacting i love talking you know there is this we always used to say that in radio right from an rj to a sales person we all talk for a living so yesterday since yesterday when i was supposed to give this talk and you know uh, i got some messages from our faculties including dr kavita and stuff like that it was like you know i was waiting for to address you people as if you know there is a restaurant which is opening after a lockdown right so if you really like what you are doing you will not feel that pressure also you will not say see i uh, the first day i remember so vividly uh, you know my radio one day the day we joined radio one my boss said that look i am not really looking at being ebita positive and all those things are definitely there but if there is one benchmark where, where i am going to measure myself is if you are coming to office on a monday morning you shouldn't be saying that oh god i have to go to office i want to create a culture where if you are coming to office on a monday morning you feel oh wow i'm going to office and trust me i worked in radio one for 12 years not a single day i felt like i was working there i used to go on weekends to also my office because you know we had a good time there in the sense that's the kind of culture the organization had what i'm trying to tell you here is very important you figure out uh, this two years is also an opportunity for you to do a lot of introspection that what you like what gives you happiness and believe me you got your mentors and everybody for that matter and you know if there are say 8 to 10 industries in your mind for example you talk about media or radio you can always get in touch with your alumni right i mean you know we are all here for that only to tell you what for example i am not going to give you the right or the wrong answers i am only going to help you to answer your own question for that matter but provided you ask the right questions sure sir it will be definitely the right questions are the related questions will be asked there's a another question how to build network on linkedin apart from just connecting with different people uh, see what happens is um, it's like this uh, you imagine you go to a party right there are you go to a party you say hi to everybody hi 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 you said hi to 100 people and you come back home and you say oh i said hi to 100 people now 100 people ko maine hi bola hai that is not how you get in touch with anybody at linkedin what you need to ideally do is instead of saying hi to 100 people at a party say hi to one or two people try to engage in a to first of all find a person where you can have a you know meaningful conversation with spend that half an hour one hour in that party with that person people usually confuse like for example i should tell you i think you know i i learned the hard way okay i when i started selling okay uh i used to feel if i do 15 meetings in a day the chances of sales will be very high so my boss at the end of the day used to ask faz how many meetings you did i said boss i got 15 visiting cards so literally in hindi he said me something which i really remember to bolta shaadi ka card baatne gaya tha kya it was not that you know you are selling wedding cards and you know you just wedding he said even if you have two or three meaningful meetings in a day where you sit with somebody and firstly understand their brand for example i am a radio person i never started talking radio after that the first thing which you need to ask is hey i am here at your place please tell me more about your business so you you know there was a time when you know wonderland which was an amusement park which was you know launched in bangalore i actually played a role in you know launching that brand in bangalore so when i was sitting with arun chitala pilli who is actually the son of uh, you know mr kochesh chitapuli who owns vigar industries he was a guy who had a dream that he wants to create india's disney land in the form of wonderland so the conversation is how will radio play a part in creating the india's disney land for that matter you are not just there to for example uh, give a quote that you know hey give me 2 lakhs of business we will give you so much of air time no the first thing which you need to do is you know we we keep asking ourselves when we meet a person you know uh, there is this saying in hindi people usually start asking you hey what do you do or how much you know they, they are trying to gauge how much money you are earning so that they can decide how much respect to give a person right that is the mistake which we do the first thing which you need to do is for example we need to be genuinely interested in people 
understand what for example the, in motivates that person and then you know bring in a factor where you know you look at a uh, win-win solutions so one of the things which in sales i learned is uh, when you first meet a person you get into a heart to heart kind of a conversation where you talk your heart out i speak you, that person speaks their heart out so when you meet a client you need to ask stuff like sir how did you get into that business what what would have prompted a person uh, who came from a stabilizer industry to start a amusement park so he would have said you know when i went to singapore i saw universal studios and i was like man why can't we have it in india right so it's a heart to heart conversation so always begin with a heart to heart conversation then comes mind to mind that then you start talking about operations like for example you talk about brands that for example you give a time frame 6 months 8 months how do we position the brand and then you start getting into nitty gritties and only then you start wallet to wallet where you are talking money to money for that matter the mistake people do is they start with wallet to wallet first hey how much money can i get from this guy for example you know i was working i'm currently working with an entrepreneur and we were just trying to select an advertising agency the first question the advertising agency is asking the entrepreneur whom i am working with that what is your marketing budget it puts us off right i mean you know if you start a conversation by asking budgets then you you know that as the only thing which motivates that person they are not interested in your brand yes sir uh, actually few uh, many say that the india has a culture of making the relationship first and then the business Maybe absolutely have implied absolutely i exactly what i meant in fact there are two types of sales people they generally say one is transactional and second one is the relationship driven so one guy is only interested in the transaction and the other one is trying to build relationships yes sir uh the last uh, the question here we have my few last few questions what matters most in business profit or ethics i think it's a combination of two it, it should never be a, one at the cost of the other it's a you know um, uh, I, i think it has to be a combination of both it it can't be it's like is like you asking me uh, to choose between my right eye or left eye you know or left ear or right ear ideally it is a combination of both right see if you are very ethical and do not make profit will you be in business you won't be right and if you earn only profit and you are not very ethical then you know for example it, it doesn't make any sense right then you are not doing the right thing so a combination of both is extremely important yes sir maybe the last question we have for this session is uh, the earnings of many micro mid tier influencers and bloggers got badly affected post the ban of tiktok and other chinese short video apps how should yeah. an influencer or content creator prepare for such a situation in the future see there are certain factors which are usually uncontrollable right like for example the pandemic really shattered a lot of business and lot of hopes of a lot of people but at the same time i have seen a lot of people despite this you know creating something for themselves you know in even in adversity they found an opportunity what if i told you there is a see because of the pandemic travel as a category got completely banned right nobody was traveling correct Yes. there was one company which actually made a lot of money during pandemic and that was wildcraft everybody was talking about n95 mask they started something called as w95 mask they knew that you know pandemic is going to affect their business they saw an opportunity and and i'm sure everybody who's listening to me must have seen a wildcraft kiosk selling masks right so to answer the question a lot of uh, influencers who were dependent on a single platform which was tiktok they were affected but people like for example what happens is lot of smart influencers know uh, you know they 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 are they are very platform agnostic they are on youtube as well as instagram also so they found their calling in those kind of uh, you know platforms when we were uh, studying entrepreneurship uh, uh, our our professor dikshit said a brilliant thing and something i have never you know forgotten that and i learned it in the classrooms of my mba at christ college which was you should be never depend be dependent on a single customer single supplier single vendor and if you were to look at it in life also you should not be dependent on a single company single vendor anybody single no for that matter you should not be dependent because 
there are always going to be scenarios where for example we you know uh, for example if, if that person doesn't exist yes i think as we see every everything in the alternative point of view we have to go on in the same path <laughs> that's life isn't it siri yes sir uh so one last question posed by sai dhananjay Will sure. digital marketing replace traditional marketing by huge portion in the market? Uh, Nobody is going to replace one thing. For that matter, everybody will have their place under the sun. The market shares will definitely be different because you, uh, you know, on one hand, you know, for example, I'll I'll tell you a, a small example. I think you know a uh, lot of us believe that newspapers are not something which people read these days, right? People read consume news on app and things like that. but you would see any google product the day they are you know launching something they take a full page jacket which with times of india why are they taking traditional marketing because we all know that to reach a diverse set of audiences you definitely need you know diverse medium so traditional marketing is definitely going to stay but everybody will have to show relevance to the client show value to the client to exist and that challenge will always be there see what happens is right now i am addressing you what you know what my competition is right now somebody who feels that you know probably they are not getting their times value they can always mute this video and go to youtube and learn something on on somewhere else right your competition is going to be from places where you don't you can't even imagine so it's not just traditional marketing it's it's everywhere for that matter kodak never expected that they will go bankrupt because of smartphones Yes. Thank you, sir. We really had a great in insightful session from you, and the answers from you are very great. And we uh, got inspired and got very knowledgeable from the session. Here is all uh, mine, sir. Uh, Sirina, before you propose word of thanks, uh, thank you so much, Siri, for the wonderful introduction and uh, being the moderator. Um, you, Mr. Vyas, I wanted to know about this Kotler Award, uh, you know, yeah. that you received. Yeah. so uh this kotler award usually what happens is uh, you know i think back in 2018 uh, they were looking at uh, india as a market and you know probably they wanted to uh, get into get in touch with companies where you know, they wanted to so basically they wanted to know what kind of different marketing which has been done so they were uh, media was a category and within media there was radio print and you know other mediums for that matter so there were some companies which earned the award as far as holdings is concerned right the, the, there's one company who actually marketed themselves uh, you know if i remember uh, they had created this raft uh, a life size boat uh, in bombay when there is raining it, it really literally you need a boat so that's the joke so actually they they had put that holding on you know a life size boat on a holding and stuff like that so there are a lot of companies which earned awards for different reasons as far as radio is concerned we were the most differentiated so differentiation was the benchmark what was the category and we earned the quarter award for that actually so congratulations for that uh, unique uh, you know award for the excellence Thank you. Um, so, um, uh, may I request uh, Serena to propose a word of thanks? Thank you, ma'am. The only way to discover the limits of the possible is to go beyond them to do the impossible. In today's session, we got to know that MBA is indeed beyond academics, and how we students can make the most out of it. I, Serena Vasant. Deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this remarkable occasion. Let me start by thanking the Almighty for making today's session a successful one. On behalf of the School of Business and Management, Christ University, I would like to thank Mr. Fayaz Muhammad for this, who, despite his hectic schedule, found time to grace this occasion and gave us such great insights. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us on how to make the most of our MBA journey. Your helpful tips will be a notable learning for all of us for the next two years. Also, thank you, Miss Siri, for moderating the session and helping us conduct the session smoothly. I would like to thank Christ University, Father VC, 
dean, associate deans, head of departments, head of specializations, and the corporate interface team for providing such a resourceful session for our batch. I would also like to thank all the participants for their active involvement during the session. I would like to mention that we have now come to the end of today's corporate interface session on MBA moving beyond academics. This is Serena Vasant signing off. Have a great evening. Stay safe. Take care.